Assignment Contracts, as close as it gets to a magic bullet in debt defense. Brought to you by YourLegalLegUp.com, your advantage if you are being sued by debt collectors. We say in the law that there are no magic bullets in debt defense, but getting the assignment contract may be as close as it gets. A magic bullet is a tool or action so powerful and significant that simply invoking it can be a game changer. It can feel easy, magical. And so people on the internet are always looking for magic bullets, the straw man theory, uh, certain weird uses of the uniform commercial code, crazy stuff like that, you name it, even bankruptcy. But these things never work because there's no free lunch anywhere, anytime, anyway. There is something that is almost a magic bullet though. It isn't magic, doesn't work all the time and can take a lot of work to get. So that's why it's not magic, right? But if you do get it, it will make your life easier and it will often be enough to win your case, provided you know what to do with it. I'm talking about the assignment contract and this video applies only to people who are being sued by debt buyers, not by the original creditors. If you've got an original creditor, this uh, video is not going to apply to you. So what is an assignment contract? To know what that is, let's step back a bit and look at the debt collection industry. As you know, they operate on scale, massive scale. You have a large number of banks, dozens, you know, hundreds maybe, who charge off debts. And these debts go to the, and these companies go to the market and sell those debts by the tens of a thousand, tens of thousands of accounts at a time at auction. So we could be talking hundreds of millions of dollars at a time at an auction. It's a very large scale business. We've pointed out that the companies suing people often file dozens of cases at a time, but the debt sales are much, much bigger. They're national or even international on scale. And they're also designed for efficiency, of course, as everything else is in the business. The standard debt sale involves three main documents, not two, as you may have been led to believe. It includes the bill of sale, which debt collectors routinely provide in response to discovery, uh, and you probably know about it. the list of accounts, which debt collectors often do not provide in, dis in response to discovery for some reason, and which forms one of the three weaknesses I've discussed in another video. And the bill of sale is just a document which says um, that the the bank, the selling bank is selling a bunch of accounts to the debt collector and it refers to the uh, list of accounts usually as an exhibit, you know, as an exhibit to the, um, to the bill of sale, which then the debt collectors may or may not provide you. It also includes um, the assignment contract, but the debt collectors essentially never turn that over in response to discovery requests. Of course, they know it's there and their failure to provide it or even mention it is flatly unethical and dishonest if you ask for it. And most people do ask for it uh, without knowing exactly that's what they're asking for. And so I think that the, um, the debt collectors have engaged in uh, industry-wide subterfuge or uh, trickery as far as that's concerned. Did, would that surprise you to learn? <laughs> Uh, it's, if it's the debt buyer, um, it's there though. You need you need to know if there's if your company bought the debt, the company that's suing you bought the debt. There is an assignment contract, and you can use their failure to mention it or give it to you as a way to keep pushing for discovery. And it's more important now than ever, thanks to a recent Supreme Court case. The assignment contract, very simply, is created by the selling bank not by the buyer, but by the seller. And it states the terms and conditions of the mass sale of debt um, accounts to the debt collector. It determines which documents the debt collector automatically gets, which you probably know are a very small percentage of the account records. Um, in most cases, we're talking about just the last statement and um, you know maybe one or two other than that how the debt collector could get more documents, including how much they'll cost and how fast they'll come, which strangely enough, is really never in time to respond to a, a normal discovery request. And under what conditions the debt sale will be canceled, if at all. 
It's this last thing, the conditions which would cancel the sale, that I'm particularly interested in right now. In a terrible recent decision, the Supreme Court held that when debt collectors purchase debts, they become creditors rather than debt collectors for purposes of the debts that they bought. I believe that status could be challenged depending on the terms that would cancel the debt sale. See, when, they, when a debt collector buys a debt, there are things that could happen that would cause the, um, the bank which sold the account to have to take it back, at least in most cases. And the question is, how, um, how tough are those conditions? And does that really affect who actually owns the debt? I believe that you could prove that the selling bank still owns the debt under certain circumstances, and that might be enough to keep the debt collector from being the actual owner of the debt. However, that may be the debt collectors will fight like cats and dogs to keep you from getting the assign assignment contracts. They'll start by pretending it isn't there in the first place, and this will give you leverage to push them around and maybe make them go away and leave you alone for good. Or it may be that it will give you what you need to win if, they, if you manage to get the thing, and if they don't go away and leave you alone. So um, you need to get that assignment contract. Protect what's yours and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. Your legal leg up, that calm.